they have to what? Understand that uh, God wanted them. I, I mean, the Ark of Covenant was a place first in order to what? For them to see the view of the Ark. Now, setting eyes on God. Now, it's very important. That's why the Bible tells us here that what? In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. What, what does the Bible uh, says here? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the what? Throne of God. There's God's presence. Amen? Now, but one more thing that they have to do while going there is this. Okay? They have to what? Let's go back to our text, please, in uh, Joshua chapter 3, verse uh, 5, please. The Bible tells us here in verse 5, And Joshua said unto the people, what? Sanctify yourselves. It is very important to sanctify themselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Now, this was both a, what we call a promise, and the fulfillment of the promise dependent on their obedience to the order. It depends. Now, that was the uh, message that Joshua gave to them. Now, sanctify yourselves means that everybody needs to, what, to bathe themselves. Everybody needs to, what, to change their clothes before crossing the river. Everybody needs to what? To be devoted themselves wholly unto the what? The Lord. We can see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 1 to 6, but we're not going to go there anymore. Now, during the time in the Near East, we have to understand that water was a luxury during the time. Okay? It was luxury that wasn't used too often for personal hygiene. But in modern times right now, Modern world were accustomed to comfortable bathing facilities, but these were unknown to most of the people in the Bible times. That's why, makikita naman natin sa mga tsura nila, but it doesn't mean that they're not cleaning. That's why, sanctifying themselves, they need to sanctify themselves first. The washing of one's body and changing clothes symbolizes what? It symbolizes what? Making a what? New beginning. That's the symbol for that. Sanctify yourselves. That's why God has, a, has to cleanse us before we can truly follow Him. Amen? We cannot follow the Lord God if we are not sanctified. We cannot follow. It's okay. So, now, let's continue here. Let's uh, take a look here in Psalm 51 2. Now, sin is pictured as defilement in Psalm 51 verse 2. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Also in verse 7, it says here, Wash, uh, purge me the high soap and, oh, may sabun talaga, soap. And I shall be clean, wash me, and I shall be whiter than what? Snow. That's why God has to cleanse us, okay, before we can truly, what, follow Him. So when Jacob uh, made a new beginning with the Lord and returned to Bethel, he and his family need to, what, wash themselves and change their garments. We can see that in Genesis 35, 1 to 3. After David mourned and confessed his sin, he washed and changed his clothes and worshipped the Lord. Amen. So, the promise was that the Lord would do wonders among them. Let's go back to our text again in uh, chapter 3. So, as he opened the Red Sea to deliver the people of Israel out of the bandage of Egypt, so he would also open Jordan to take them into what? The promised land. 
But that would be just the beginning of the miracles for the Lord would go them into the land and also what? Defeat their enemies. And that's the blessing from the Lord. Amen? That's the blessing. God's presence is there. Now, let's proceed to verse 6. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went, what? Before the people. We have to understand that God already commanded Joshua what to do. Amen? Joshua knew what to do. So we have to understand that Joshua knows this because he has the word. He has God's word in his life. Reading and remembering the crossing of the Red Sea. Let us try to take a look in Joshua 1.8. A very familiar verse. In Joshua 1.8, it says here, Okay, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have what? Good success. Joshua obviously had the word of God on his what? Lips, on his mind, and in his actions. Now, the instruction once again. And they took up, up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. Now, even with God's guidance, and sp uh, specific guidance, and with the specific guidance from His Word, this is very impressive. Amen? Very impressive. Why? Living and walking in uh, the Promised Land comes from this kind of faith. Now, we have to understand that faith leads us into greater victories than law ever could. That's a great blessing. God's presence in the steps of a faith. Point number two. We're not going to take long on this. Verse number seven to eight. And the Lord said unto Joshua, this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priest that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall what? Stand still in Jordan. Point number two. There's God's encouragement. <clears throat> so as Joshua takes the step of faith, God encouraged him all the way. Now, you know, this is the good thing for our God because He will always encourage us and help us along our faith. But we may sometimes, what? Have a close ears on the encouragement of God and we try to neglect and reject all of these things. That he keeps on reminding us. Now, sometimes we really cannot avoid this, but uh, most of the time, people might say, "Ah, oh, I'm too tired in serving the Lord. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Hey, please help me. Hey, we have the word of God that keeps on reminding us to continue. Amen? Continue, continue. But we have closed ears. Now, it says here, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. That's a great encouragement, amen? God will make Joshua to become what a great leader in the eyes of the people. And he will do it using Joshua to miraculously lead the people across what? The impossible body of water. Amen? You know, sometimes we are not very careful in dealing with our problems in life. But after Joshua had obeyed the previous command, based on the faith, again, take note, based on the faith 
and also based on understanding of God's word. Now, God gives him more specific instruction. Look at that. Verse 8. When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in what? Jordan. Now, when Moses led the nation through the Red Sea, this miracle here magnified Moses and exalted Moses before the people. And that is the reason why the people of Israel recognized that he was indeed what? The servant of God. After they crossed the Jordan, I mean after they crossed the what? The Red Sea. We can see that in Exodus 14, 31, please. Exodus 14, 31. And Israel saw, uh, saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord. And what? And his servant, what? Moses. Amen? So God would do the same thing for Joshua at the Jordan. He would remind the people that he was with Joshua as he ha had been with what? Moses. Let's take a look in uh, Joshua 4.14. Let's take a look there, please. Joshua 4.14. On that day, the Lord, what? Magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. So both Moses and Joshua received this authority from the Lord before the mir these miracles occurred. And that's a blessing. That's an encouragement. Amen. So in the steps of faith, there's what? An encouragement. We really cannot avoid these problems that may come along our way. But we, all, we have to think that we have a great God who is in control. God will always encourage us. He encourages us. He encourages us. And giving us what? That strength so that we can face these trials in life. Now, let's proceed. Verse 9. It says here, And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive you out from before you, the Canaanites, the Hittites. By the way, the Hittites were the first uh, uh, group of people who uh, used steel okay, in making chariots during those days. The Hittites, according to history. And the Hivite, Hivites, or Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Gergesites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Verse 11, Behold the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Now therefore take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe of men. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand as what? As an heap. Now, if we're going to analyze here, Joshua clearly understands the way God connects in the events of our lives. Now, just let us try to take a look here. The fact that he will move on behalf of Israel here is taken as a what? Promise of his future blessing and his what? movement for them. Remember, he is leading millions of people, not only hundreds of people. It says here, let's go back to our text. Verse 11, Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. 
Jo Joshua knew that the Ark of the Covenant will lead the way. Next point, point number three, God's leading. There will always be God's leading in the steps of faith. Again, this is a spiritual battle to be won. We're fighting in spiritual battles, amen? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, please. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, but against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take, you, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of what? Righteousness. Spiritual battle. Amen. Now, God's leading here. Let's take a look. In verse 13, that the waters of what? Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon an heap now this is what the general uh, the general outlook of Joshua it's very refreshing here we have to understand that the impossible problems okay in our way are not seen as an impressive trial amen the problems in our way are not seen as an impressive trial, but as a glorious opportunity to see God to work on it. Amen. Our God is powerful, and He can do possible things in our lives. And all we have to do is what? To trust and believe in Him. You know, we cannot believe ourselves, we're sinners. We tend to make mistakes most of the time. But with the help of God, everything is possible. Amen? Yes, we can do mistakes. But we don't need to look at the past. What we're trying to see right now is what? The present. What we can do right now. Amen? Everybody committed mistakes. And that's done. Wag na natin tinan yung nakaraan. It serves as a lesson and we have to move forward and do better for the Lord. Now, let's proceed. Verse 14, It came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. So I take a look here. And as they that bear the ark and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were deep in the brim of the water for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of what? Harvest. No. Last point here. You can see. There's God's confirmation. Amen. God's confirmation. Let's start to take a look. The priests begin their what procession here. But take note. With the Ark of the Covenant, some 1,000 yards far. Okay? In front of the people. And the priest came and walked right into the river that looked like it wasn't going anywhere. It takes about faith. Amen. While the priests were uh, carrying the Ark of the Covenant, they didn't hesitate on their steps. Oh, testing. Testing. It takes a lot of courage 
It takes a lot of faith. And most of the time, this is what we're doing. We wanted the riverbed to be dried up before we are going to step in. No, that's not the will of God. That's not the will of God in our lives. It takes courage. It takes what? Faith in doing these things. Now, the question is, who knows how long those priests will uh, stand in the middle of the river? Nobody knows. It might take a moment. It may take a long time. But we, we have to understand that they've been there, okay, waiting until all the people of Israel were what? Able to what? Pass. Take note. When they stepped out of faith, listen very carefully, the flows, I mean the, the flow of the river what? Stopped and it became what? A heap. It is something like a mound of piling up. And the same thing as what happened when they crossed at the Red Sea. The ground, they were able to uh, pass on the dry ground. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. God will always prepare and give His confirmation to all of us if we only have that faith in us. I mean faith in Him. So, no. we have to understand here, it says here, verse 15, For Jordan over, uh, overfloweth through all his banks all the time of what? Harvest. This reminds us that during this time, okay, the Jordan River didn't reduce its what? Water or a trickle or little by little. But what? The river was swollen and overflowing for its what? Banks. But for those who are doubting, they really cannot cross the river. Look at, uh, so see how God is preparing them. First, God said, okay, sanctify yourselves. Now, during most of the year, the Jordan River was about 100 feet wide. But at the spring flood season, the river overflowed its banks and became a mile wide. So as soon as the priests banged the ark, put their feet into the river, what? The water stopped flowing and stood like a wall about 20 miles away upstream. This is a blessing. Unless we step out by faith, again, you have to get our feet wet first. Amen? Get your feet wet. So each step that the priest took opened the water before them until they were standing in the midst of the river on dry ground. They stood there as the people passed by and when the whole nation had crossed, the priest now walked to the shore and the flow of the water returned. Step out of faith. Amen? When God opened, divided the Red Sea, God used a strong wind for them. Amen? God used a strong wind and that blew the whole night. Now, the whole night here, Exodus 14, 21 and 22. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. 
See how God used this miracle to lead them? When they crossed the Red Sea, God, uh, I, I mean, when God uh, uh, removed them out from the land of bandage, God used the miracle in order for them to, what, cross the Red Sea. And this time, when God uh, uh, will lead them going into the promised land, God used the miracle as well by the what? Crossing the what? Jordan River. See how God good our see how good our God is. This is confirmation in us if we have faith in Him. Have faith in Him. So when Moses lifted his rod, the wind began to blow, and when he lowered the rod, the wind. Uh, what, what happened? The waters flowed back. And drown the Egyptian army. So when Israel crossed the Jordan River, it was not the obedient arm of the leader that brought the miracle. But what? What brought them here? There. Their what? Obedience. That's why we have a song, right? Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Spell. Oh, di ba? Alam niyo po yun. Obedience is very important. Now, let's go back to our text once again. 16 and 17. That the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon an heap very far from the city Adam, that is beside Zaritan, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea failed and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jericho. Now, I believe that when the people of Israel were marching, going to the brinks of Jordan, I believe that the people of Jericho were watching them. Amen? They could have made a, a, a small boat, in crossing the river, but that would be a uh, a uh, tendency for their defeat if they will do that kind of uh, uh, strategy in crossing the river. But again, the good thing here is that God is leading them. Amen. Now, let's proceed. Verse seventeen, and the priests that bear the ark. Of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over what? Jordan. Amen. Wow. The confirmation of God. Now, it was a miraculous that the people could cross over on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. God miraculously dried the riverbed so that they didn't what slug through what marshy mat. Amen. Wow, what a blessing in the steps of faith. Now, we will continue our lesson next time in chapter four, if I will be given another chance. Uh, let us try to see what happened to them and I think everybody knows about it Amen Amen Sabi mo lang gaya-gaya po tumaya serious din para masaya di ba para cute di ba basta napunta tayo doon let's proceed serious serious okay now napapat na so the Ark of the Covenant cleared the way for Israel. So if we're going to study here in uh, this uh, 17 verses, okay, the, uh, the focus of the Ark of the Covenant was uh, uh, presented here 16, uh, 14 times in these uh, 17 uh, verses here in this book. So again, this was all about the trust of Joshua the priest and the people of Israel. Amen? 
So in the steps of faith, point number one, what? God's, there's God's presence. Point number two, there's God's encouragement. Point number three, there's God's leading. And point number four, there's God's confirmation. So He always leads us. Now, we have to understand that uh, Jesus is the fulfillment of the ark. He's the fulfillment of the ark. Now, Matthew 1, 23. Yeah, so we have here brother Matthew. Okay. It's biblical. Amen. Matthew 1, 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with, with a child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted is what? God with us. So he is our Emmanuel. God with us. Another thing here, Jesus always what? He cleared the way for us. He prepared the way for us. Okay? To victory of all things. Now, Colossians 2.15. It says here, Colossians 2.15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So Jesus has cleared the way. And lastly, as we keep our eyes on him and follow behind our victorious Jesus, what? The river of what? The impossibility will dry up. Amen. If we follow Jesus. Amen. So I hope you will... Uh, You've learned something from this uh, this uh, morning. It's quite short, but I hope all those principles were there. You really grasp it. So let us pray. Our loving Father, thank you once again for giving us your grace and for giving us, Lord God, your mercy towards us. Once again, Lord, we're so thankful and grateful for this uh, day.